Hello everyone. This is Ed and Chris and we are here to virtually taste with you like we do every Thursday. Uh, for all of you that can't be with us on our Thursday night tasting here at the winery, we do this virtually so that you don't miss out <coughs> on a thing. So uh, cheers to that. Cheers. Uh, you should have some delicious food and wine in your pickup pack right about now. See, Chef, I don't even need a wine tool. I don't even need a wine tool. So over-prepared. Yep. I so love it. We were, uh, we were kidding around about twist-offs the other day. And, uh, well, what can I say? They make life a lot easier. The whole idea, though, was not for ease of opening, although that's what it's turned into be, but is to keep wines much fresher, less chance of corkage and spoilage. There's a little bit of glare there. I hope you can see this. We are going to start off in South Africa, and this is probably not your, and when you first think of Sauvignon Blancs, probably not think in this area, but you should, because they're absolutely delicious. Now, we've had a lot of Chenin Blancs, or as they call it down there, Steen. Uh, we've had a lot of those, and we love them. Of course, they're Syrahs. We love those as well. Pinotage. Pinotage, yeah. which is you know, basically uh, their, their home crossed varietal down there. You don't really see Pinotage anywhere else in the world. But a lot of people say, thank God, it's a love it or hate it kind of varietal. Nobody's on the fence. Yeah, you're either in or you're out. But uh, this, is, this has been a really great winery for us. We featured the Man properties before. And M-A-N is the reflective of the three owners' wives. So they were thinking of a name for their winery. So they just took the first initial from each one of their wives. And so now they're in the good graces of their wives. So when they're, they're working the right thing. When they're working 90 hours a week, they're like, hey, it's for you, babe. It's all for you. And, uh, you know, that's pretty, pretty romantic and pretty neat. And this is a, a great, what I would call a high volume. I mean, they do about 2 million bottles a year. Um, how many do we do here? Maybe 150,000? Maybe. At, at our winery? Maybe. So to give you some idea of the scope of what they can produce there, it's pretty remarkable. And, uh, well, we like it because they're very affordable. All yes, their wines, every wine that I've come across in their portfolio is well below $20, oftentimes below 15 So, hey, if you're looking for an everyday drinker, this might be it. So, Chef, we've been really high on Sauvignon Blancs. Yes, this time of year. You know, where it gets, you know, get the warm, almost hot afternoons. So these are great to come home to, either from work mm -hmm. or the yard. Um, they're refreshing. Mm -hmm. And when I say approachable, it doesn't mean they're not complex. They're just very, to me, they're very approachable. They're crisp and bright and, mm -hmm. and fruity, and they're just ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. And so this, you know, we've, we've talked about all the Sauvignon Blancs of the world. We talk, talk about a lot of the chef's table because... We tend to have a Sauvignon Blanc on almost every single chef's table because they're such great food wines. And we talk about all the different regions that Sauvignon Blanc really shines, you know, whether it's Sancerre or uh, Marlboro, um, Chile, and the, all the great regions, of course, California. California yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to leave them out. But the, Sauvignon Blanc grows in a lot of places. But this, to me, reminds me most of Chilean. Yes, I mean, if, if I were going to taste compare the steel, and yeah, yeah, I mean yep. it's just yeah, that that Chilean steel is mm -hmm. always something I always think are reminiscent of Chilean wines and that greenery. There's uh, mm. definitely vegetation, green vegetation here. Great citrus. I do like the body on this for for such an entry level price mm. point. The, weight. the the weight of it is mm -hmm. phenomenal. Well, oftentimes we find that uh, maybe a lower-priced Sauvignon Blanc might be a little thin. Can be. It could be a little watery. Uh, you know, and again, it did, I don't think that even is a... Can, it can be a negative. It can be a negative at the chef's table. But but not necessarily in a... In, in a you know, if you're grabbing a, you know, an under $20 Sauv Blanc, sure. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you're ready to... Yeah, you're ready to quench your, your quench thirst. that thirst, and that's what is great about these. Wines. And so sometimes, you know, the lighter weight is a benefit because you don't want to get bogged down. But I mean, this is is not at the expense of the brightness. I mean, right, it's just really high end one. Yeah, this I think you'll find that this is great by itself. It would be great with a myriad of different foods. Mm. 
And Chef, you knew we were going to have Sab Blanc. You didn't really know what style we were going to have. But what do you think about this? Well, this is uh, this is fabulous. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do a salmon with this, which with a little goat cheese and lemon. Although I'm getting huge, huge lime on this, and so I think the lemon would be. I was worried. I was ready to back off on that because mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be lemon on top of lemon. But I th I'm getting predominant lime on this. So I think it's citrus. I think you're right, and I think it's. Uh, it's more like the skin, the the pith. Just like when you're zesting a lime. Oh yes, yeah. it's, it's mm. because it, it is that intense, mm. but it's also it's it doesn't give the impression of sweet lime juice or. or no, something no, like no, no, and and uh, I think the lemon will give it a roundness to complement the, the the lime on this, and of course we love goat with that blanc. And, oh yeah, one of the great classic pairings of all times. Goat cheese and Sauvignon and Blanc, not be. and it's almost every version of of goat cheese that we've tried. We've done, and of course, Chef gets all these really cool artisan cheeses week after week, and sometimes it's a hybrid of goat, mm -hmm. and that works too. If they do like a blend, like a blend of, like the Dirty Girl, that's mm -hmm. you know fifty fifty, or or you know you, the soft goats, the creamy goats, the aged goat, they all work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just can't go wrong. It's wonderful. I would imagine this would go great with just about any seafood. I just got back from the beach. Lisa and I went down there for a, just a, relaxed, a little two-day getaway. It looked like you, you got a lot in, out of it. Though. We, didn't, we didn't do much. Yeah. You seem relaxed. I was happy to see that when you walked in this morning. I was hoping it wasn't, you know, rush, have fun, rush back. You seem like you, you chilled a little bit. Yeah, we, we didn't try to squeeze an extra day, you know, make that, hey, well, we can stay another night and just leave at 4 in the morning. Instead, we came back, you know, at a reasonable hour, mm -hmm. smart, and was able to get laundry done and stuff like that. So we you weren't playing the garden a little bit too. Didn't yeah, you? I, I bought some flowers and planted them at, at dusk. That's the best time to garden. It was nice and yeah. cool. And I saw my the first toad of the year. Oh, no. little bitty guy. He was just observing, making maybe, sure he was putting them in the right place. Yeah, and yeah. then he was going to eat any bugs, maybe hopefully that got near my tomatoes or my chilies. And they're known for their protective nature. And hopefully, no more frosts. It's got to be it. It's that has be. to be behind us. They always say yeah. wait till Mother's Day, but I can't wait. The stuff is looking so good. <clears throat> I want to stick in the ground. I went out uh, yesterday afternoon and got a few ferns because I've been holding off. And walking past all those hoop houses, you know, it was so hard to not just go ahead and, you know, spend the kids' college fund on, on flowers. <laughs> but I just held out, got a few ferns, so like, I'll see you next week. And we'll, you know, start to do pots and things like that. But it, it's a great time. Of year. Yes, it is. It's a lot of fun. And we're actually seeing temperatures that are more spring-like. We had a really cool spring so far. Now it's around the money, high 70s. And 80, 81 max right yeah. now. Perfect. Well, and, and cool night. You know, we're getting that breeze at night. It's brisk in the morning. <clears throat> I really hate starting my day off when it's you know, humid and warm in the morning. I love a brisk morning and evening. So it's great. Holy cow. That is delicious. Great value. Great wine. We look forward to selling you this by the case, not by the bottle. Because, I mean, spring and summer... I mean, Fantastic. it's just, you don't even think about it. Just grab it and drink it. That'll, 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 that'll leave your refrigerator, your wine cooler very quickly, I guarantee mm -hmm. it. Well, we got, we were, uh, we got Mother's Day coming up. God, that's two weeks. Yeah. I can't and believe how fast it's coming up. Mom and Joe will be cruising down here soon nice, to visit. Nice. And, uh, well, let's see what Hopefully else. They can stay for a, for a little spell. And uh, they like Sauvignon Blanc, so I'm probably going to have a couple of bottles of that. Yeah, you'll need them. to put a few up there. Boy, sitting on the we, uh, veranda there with some Sav Blanc. Oh, yeah. A little we, breeze. Lisa and I went to this uh, killer seafood restaurant that the Bowmans took us to last time we were down. Cool. And so we had to go back. We loved it so much. Beautiful. Has a view of... Uh, it's kind of like a small bay. It has docks mm. for uh, shrimp boats and... Personal boats, fishing boats. It's right off the intercoastal there. Yeah, it's beautiful, design. beautiful stuff. And marshland and big, big old mansions across the way. But uh, I was really surprised to see that they had a pick pool de penne on the oh. list. 
And I was going to order something else, but I figured, well, you know what? Since they're going to reward make them, yeah. yeah, I was going to reward them making a wine list of one of my favorite varietals. And we've had it here at the winery. We've done it at our, some of our Thursday night tastings in years past. And it's just a wonderful wine. But Steve, I had it with, of course, oysters on the house. Oh. Per- perfect. But I, uh, what a treat. It was bright, just like this man Sauvignon Blanc. And I think if. Uh, it just reminded me of how much I enjoyed that meal. Mm-hmm. I bet that was a great pairing. We did. You do them raw, or did you get a little, a little butter? I did braise? the uh, the fresh horseradish and the lemon. And it all was, day it long. was that's all I needed. All day long. Oh, they had a vignette. So oh, I had the, oh, nice. the, the, oh, little, nice. the little little shallot, shallot red wine and, vinegar. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That was nice. Okay, so since it's spring. Why not have a lighter style red? But we're not going to sacrifice flavor no. because the grape is Nebbiolo. Thank you. Now, let's see if we can get a non What a non- great looking player. label on that. That's really sharp. So this is from the Longue region. This is, uh, you know, the Piedmonte, the uh, north, uh, northern western part of, of Italy. And this is where... The noble grape Nebbiolo grows, and it's hard to really tell, but this is a lighter style of red by nature. This is what this grape does, and it, you can see through it. It's not quite as light as Pinot, but it's, it's approaching that. Close to it. Like if some of those, uh, like the fire steep Pinot and stuff like that, that, yeah. that can be this light, but mm-hmm. it doesn't have that flavor there. Oh. I love it. You, you don't get that, you won't get this kind of flavor. You out don't of get that Nebbiolo dust mm. in a uh, Pinot. Though. So Nebbiolo, one of the most intense grapes flavor-wise, but it's delivered in a medium body, which we love because it can go with so many kinds of food for its structure. As long as that food has bold flavors, if it's if it's soft flavors, you don't want to put a Nebbiolo on it. But if you have, you know pretty uh, sound flavor profile on a dish this can go with it you know I, I, it's structurally it's phenomenal with anything I would, I would certainly have this with a steak but you could also turn around and have it with tuna I was thinking the same thing it'd be a great I tuna mean, obviously m- one of the classics is mushroom risotto mm. and you can kind of get an idea of what this wine can go with it is delicious though and because of its weight, um, it doesn't weigh you down. So you can slug wine like Chris and I do and not feel blood. It, it make you feel like a pro for a day. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what's um, really, really... And even though, I, well, I don't know, well, still 14%, it yeah. doesn't drink like it. No. You would never, I mean, um, you would never think it had you know, such high alcohol content Ooh. because it, it doesn't taste or feel like it so absolutely and, and one of the opens a lot of doors oh yeah and, and so this is uh, one of my it's you know people ask me all the time so ed what's your favorite wine <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't really have a favorite wine i'll be honest with you i love so many wines but boy nebbiolo the grape it's probably it's hard to say that there's a better grape in the world but i, I i'll listen to anybody's argument I do love Cab and Merlot and Pinot and Sauvignon Blancs and Chardonnays, but that Viello has a, a Grenache. We do like our Grenache. Uh, it's hard to beat Grenache. But here we go. Uh, another Tempranillo beauty. too. I mean. Oh yeah, Tempranillo. But this grape belongs, in my opinion, at the top of the list of all varietals. Well, and it, and it also, uh, to your point. And, and I'm not saying other wines do, but I mean, like, you can try 10 ne- different Nebbiolos, and the, and they're, they're, they are truly 10 different wines. True. Truly 10 yeah, different yeah. wines. You know, where you could have 10 cabs, and they all taste like the same. Particularly if they're from California. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, but, you know, this, this, yeah. this region is nowhere near the size of the growing area that's of true. California, yet yeah. it has such diversity. I mean, you just drive down the street, and it tastes like, you know, it, it couldn't be more different. Yeah, I would totally agree we'll with you. walk down the street with it. I totally agree. Uh, this is uh, certainly a Tawa-driven grape, a, a varietal. Um, this is 
you know, this we happen to have the 17 here, and I, I just think that this is, it, it has a, a femininity to it, but then it also has, I don't know, it's, it kind of comes on late with the kind of, it has a little rustic finish, I would say. It does, and you get that classic dust, too, that I think I always think Nebbiolos have. Tons and tons of tannins, but they're mm. hidden. They're dusty. Mm -hmm. They and come, like, now I'm like, got the yeah. cotton mm -hmm. So we have, we have incredible vegetality and earth on the nose. Uh, even rose petals, probably dried. It's it's really it's beautiful. Hibiscus, nose. hibiscus yeah, yes, I love that call. That's a great it's, it's, call. It's such a beautiful wine. This, I love this. This is, this is if, if wine were a perfume, this would mm -hmm. be very, this would be a great description of it. It's like listening to a, a great classic, classical piece too. I mean, because it has so many yeah. moving parts. And, there are, there's a but lot of But they're all beautiful. On. They're all flowing and beautiful. They're not mm -hmm. shocking. You right. know? We're not talking yeah. about a symphony. We're talking about a... Yeah, this is not a know, death a metal piece. band. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a... Uh, this is art for mm -hmm. sure. Well, not the death metal. But True. You know what I mean? I do. This is a, this is a beauty... And I think that you're going to love it. Also, you know, Nebbiolos do have the ability to age. Although this thing's drinking great right now, I don't know that you need to age it. Yeah, three, four years, and it's already, I mean, yeah, it's, I'm sure it'll get better, but it tastes like it's in its prime. It's very integrated mm -hmm. right now. I don't feel like there's much of a hurdle in terms of integration. It's, it's very, I think it's consistent throughout. Uh, it's crazy how you can't pick up any of the alcohol, though. Zero. That's that's shocking. Zero. And I bet it, the alcohol is higher than this label too. It might be, but it, it, it even has a. Um, we always get Tyler to test it down the in the wine be lab. Interesting. It almost has a, a little caramel at the end, but yeah. it's I mean like butterscotch caramel, not. But I mean this most subtle, like if you had, it's already melted mm -hmm. and you just get a little bitty drop of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's keeping that some of the alcohol at bay that sweetness but it's not don't get me wrong when I say sweet not it's just the flavor of that yeah yeah that's one of the things in wine that it's often hard to translate things that when we're talking about things flavor wise in wines you have to detach this the sweet or the salt mm -hmm. or the bitter from these things we're describing merely the taste and I know that sounds weird but you can have the taste of something without the sweetness of yes. something in wine. Uh, in real life, if you tasted butterscotch, it's going to be sweet. That's just the way it is. But in wine, you could have a dry wine that tastes like butterscotch, yes. so it doesn't necessarily have sweetness attached to it. It's, it's, it's just the, your, your, your um, palate's being reminded of that without right. it being triggered by exactly. sugar. You're using memory mm -hmm. to describe this wine. There's certainly no butterscotch in this. And if there was, there would be quite an uproar. There would. <laughs> we'd know about it. <laughs> Somebody would hear about that. Hey. Well, Chef, with all this deliciousness, complex, what are you going to throw mm -hmm. in? Well, we're, hopefully they won't wreck it, but we've got a great uh, pate. Ooh, yeah. <clears throat> um, I took um, Nick from you know Darcy Farms is, is bringing us some more stuff this week and next week so I'm using up some last little bits so we've got some uh, all, you know all of his stuff with chorizo some andouille some ground pork um, put some lusty m m mustard some eggs a little mirepoix mixed it all together did it in a water bath it'd be a great beautiful great pate so we get the fat from the ground pork you know, we get a little uh, chili and spice from the chorizo and andouille, but it should be tempered by the ground pork. Uh, and then, of course, the vegetation, which will, you know, should brighten it, oh, know, yeah. really complement the, the vegetation we're, we're, you know, we're getting on this. So I think it's going to be a winner. I, 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 I am getting, like, fresh cut root vegetables mm -hmm. on this nose. And just to go, to go back to the pork, you said just ground pork unseasoned. That, to me... You know, Nebbiolo seems to go great with all pork. That's does, one of the things that... It, not, it wasn't until you started listing off all those porks, I'm like, I never really thought about how Nebbiolo goes so well with so many pork dishes. It's crazy. 
Remember, we used to do that uh, pork asabuco, oh. and I think you know that's another great well, that's pairing for great, nebbiolo. That's a perfect pairing for this because the um, you know unlike the the veal the veal or the beef. You know, you can do the pork asabuco without all that red wine and tomato. Mm -hmm. You know, you can keep it a little brighter and lighter, and it's still so full of flavor. Um, you know, so yeah, man, if there's if, if, if your guy's uh, cutting them, you should... Yeah, we need to do that soon. I mean, he's got a lot of pigs. We got a lot of bellies. We got a lot we of nebbiolo. Yeah, we got a lot of nebbiolo, <laughs> that is true. We have it all over the place. We have, Put them all together. We have a beautiful uh, Vara Barolo on the list. Just classic Nebbiolo. And that's from the Barolo region. This is the Longay re region where you can get similar quality without that Barolo price tag. And oftentimes, these wineries have Barolo and Longay. You know, they'll, they'll just designate which vines are going to be Barolo and which are going to be Longue. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's great to know that you have producers that can do both because you're probably getting high quality mm -hmm. yes. at a little bit of a, a deal on the price. And uh, who doesn't love a deal? That's Especially right. when we're talking about these wonderful high-end wines. We all like a, like a break so we can have more of them. Absolutely. And when you got a, a wine of this quality coming in under $25, $25, hey, you got to be happy about that. This could be your Thursday night wine. It could be your... It could be your Christmas Eve wine. I yeah, mean, it's, it, good. it's, it's versatile. Good. You, could, you could do, do it all. You could, you could play it up or play it down mm -hmm. depending on the mood you're in. Mm -hmm. The complexity would certainly allow it to go up against any large, impressive meal. And boy, you know, Nebbiolo a lot of times needs to be a food wine, but I don't think that this yeah, needs not food. Not this particular one, no. This one is it's <clears throat> just incredibly clean finish. This this does fine all by itself. And even though we're heading in, this is prime mushroom season, and we're kicking into morels, and we're going to... You're beginning the chanterelles and then the end of the, you know, it's, I can't believe it. I've missed those chanterelles. Gosh. Well, they're not here yet. I know. We got two months probably. Right? Yeah, I mean, we you know, the morels are just coming out now, so yeah. you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna have a great mushroom year. But um, but it was nice getting all those truffles over the winter, though. You had truffles like every other week. I mean, literally every other week. Mm -hmm. it, it was a banner year for truffles, uh, the white and the. And the darks, and we were going to Italy and France and all over, just banner year. Yep, that was that was a a, a truckload. Mm -hmm. Well, also, you know, we do have our. I should mention that we are going to do a buffet. Yes. For Mother's Day, which is in a week and a half, hard to believe. A week and a half. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah, a week and a half. God, that's so much to do. Yeah. Yeah, a week and a half. So, anybody out there that wants to join us, please do. We're going to be open from 11 to 2, and we would love to see you. We'll have a glass of wine if you want. Absolutely, we will. Yeah. And we'll certainly have lots of great food. Be looking for that menu to be posted up anytime now. We had a few little last minute things we wanted to make sure we were available before we stuck it out there. And then, you know, distribution has been very difficult. Uh, you know, well, many of you know the, the troubles that I've had trying to get some of your wines that are certainly from overseas is the main issue there. But domestically, food has been a big distribution issue. Well, there's a lot of glitches. There's a lot of, um, <clears throat> and there's a, it's a, they're complex answers. And, you can, and it's not one answer to why it's happening and why it's happening. And, well, don't mind, don't mind if I do. I uh, thank you. Uh, so it, it's not as it's not as simple as saying this or that or that. There's a lot of things at play, and the interconnectedness mm -hmm. of all these things with a, a multitude of challenges, you know, going around um, all things food. You know, just well, I think we want to make sure we have what we say we're going to have, and we you know we might miss one thing, but well, if we do, we'll replace it with something you of equal do. or better value. You know, one of the things is you know the whole world just reopened. And, you know, businesses are shorthanded all over the place. and People don't apply. There's not people out there that want to work. So, boy, we saw when we went, to, we went down to Winston last week, those restaurants are struggling. Struggling. Uh, you know, and every, every business, every small business has a help wanted sign. Yes. Certainly in our town. Yeah. And, 
and I'm, and I'm sure it's in most towns across America, it's just it's the reopening is, is a challenge. And it's so distribution, even within the state, you know, we're not talking about hauling stuff from mm-hmm. California here. We're talking about, because most of your food is very North Carolina, Virginia. Oh, I mean, yeah, and, and it really is. Everybody's struggling. Like the, <clears throat> well, you know, when we just talked about Nick, you know, he's, you know, he's got some, you know, a couple of animals going in that he had to make an appointment for last June. Wow. That's how long he's been waiting for a spot at the process. Yeah, that's another thing. And Everybody's backed up. You have to plan way in advance. And, you know, we talk to people in shipping, too. I mean, even, like, because trucking is on and off. I mean, a lot of times you'll ship things from Charleston to Norfolk right. rather than put it on, a, you know, 15, 18 wheelers. And, like, the, you know, the, the, the backlogs that these at these shipyards are just staggering. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, logistics and distribution are a mess right now and maybe maybe may be for a while. Yeah, it's 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 on a local, regional yeah. and nationwide yeah. and global. And so we are we we've, we've come in quite a bit of struggle in that department, but I think everybody's understanding, hopefully, that we're doing our best because all we want to do is put our best foot forward. We do. And we're luckily we're small enough to we're a bit more agile than probably a lot of our counterparts mm-hmm. that we're able to we can change the menus you know every day we can we can, sure. we can we're, we're, we're fairly agile with the size of our staff but we can't grow that's one thing we, we don't have we, time we can't grow we don't, we don't have time yeah. and we can't grow we have to we have the status quo um, which is a good one mm-hmm. yeah I'm not complaining but uh, you know it, it seems that the, the prevailing wisdom is that when we had our all of our shutdowns and layoffs last year, um, the, for the most part, all the people who were furloughed are not coming back to the industry, aren't coming back to food service or to you know, the front of the house or back. There's not, and people are the people who New York and Charlotte and far everywhere you go, they moved, and you know they don't want that instability. They and so they're just that workforce is not out there. Yeah. It's, it just disappeared, and it's not coming back. Yep, well, apparent, apparently so. So We just have to re- start bear, over. Bear with us as we rebuild the restaurant world and, the mm-hmm. obviously, the distribution world. They're, they're, they're trying like heck to find people out there to help. Believe and I, I understand when you see these uh, delivery guys, they're all exhausted because mm-hmm. they're trying to pick up shifts uh, that... You know, they're trying to help their company. And boy, you know, some of them drop. They can only do it. Yeah, and they, and they work out. themselves to death. And then they lose somebody good because they just got burnt out. So it's you a tough also time. also lost a trainer. And someone yeah, that could train someone else for mm-hmm. sure, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, the ripples are long-term, not just immediate. I totally agree. Well, Chef, you haven't worked me to death yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around. We're gonna keep at it. Yeah, we're gonna keep at it. Uh, we we love the, the 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 thing is we love what we do, and this is this yes, is we do. the stuff we love to do is doing these videos for you. Seeing you in person, obviously, is even better, and we look forward to the day when we see everybody in person. Until then, we're gonna keep doing these beautiful virtual, high end. Top notch production Top notch. videos. Second to none. Now, I'm sure you no saw. No expense us, is spared. You know, I'm sure everyone saw us at the Oscars this past weekend for our production quality uh, nomination. Yes, yes. That was, I think that one, that they actually aired that around 3 a.m. Right. Well, you can't fit the whole show. That's right? true. And, you know, we were yeah. kind enough to, to uh, allow them to put us off. And we're not one to show off or gloat or. We're all about the water. Our we're own. not about you know, the accolades. We're that's, about the juice. That's true. And we appreciate you listening to us, uh, two silly, one 49-year-old, one 50-year-old. God-year-old. One more week, buddy. When we do this next week, I will be as ancient as Chef Ed here. Yeah. uh, That's a pretty big assumption I'll be around. That's true. I don't know if you can make it. 50 is hard. It's not for the week. No, it's not. You're going to have to toughen up. I'm going to have to dig down. (laughs) Dig down. All right, everybody, we enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week. Take care.